Cruising with the Stars is brought to you by Tony West Entertainments. Hello there, great to be with you and a very warm welcome to Cruising with the Stars with me, Debbie Jones. Now, today, I have a magician and mentalist with me. His name is Ian McCoy and he's fascinating because he's done such a lot of different, different things. But you didn't see that in the future, did you, Ian? Hey, <laughs> no. Doing all of that. Lovely to have you with us today. Great to be here. And a magician and a mentalist. Yes. That, that really sounds quite otherworldly and as if you have always been interested in things behind that secret veil. Well, how old were you when you first got interested in that? I was about 10 or 11 years old. Yeah, you were hooked. Well, people love it. We're just going to take a very quick look, just a couple of seconds, uh, at people's faces when they see him performing for them. I, I, sorry, the camera caught me like this, and, because <laughs> I had the same sort of reaction. I was looking at the bio here, which is very impressive indeed, and it said, Ian McCoy is a, a master magician and mentalist, a motivational speaker and teacher, a published author, a musician, a singer-songwriter, a writer and journalist. He's got degrees in history and politics, post-grad in education and theology. I mean, <coughs> and I said to him, what is it? that you want to be billed as today? What is it you want to be known as? And it's a master. Mainly as a, a magician, magician and mentalist. And a mentalist. If I summed up everything, I could sum up everything I do in three words. Yeah. Magic. Yeah. Music. Mm -hmm. Education. But we, we've all got an idea of what magic is and magic tricks. Yes. But what about mentalism? What is a mentalist? A mentalist is a person, mm. usually a man, yeah. or a woman, who now you're saying usually a man yes, there. Yes, in, in the magical, in magic and mentalism, is it mainly, ninety-nine percent of people are, are, are men. Right. I've only met one professional lady magician in, yeah. in my life working. Yeah. In my working time, I yeah. was in Las Vegas, but um, mm -hmm. nearly all it's men. It's all men. Yeah. Yeah. Probably because women aren't hard faced to, <laughs> to lie, isn't it? There's That's been right. many theories about why <laughs> that is actually. So it might be a power thing. Yeah. I don't know. But um, <laughs> uh, but get back to get back to your question. Yeah. Um, it's a related art. It's a magic in the sense that we create a psychological illusion. And right. the psychological illusion is that we're reading minds. Right. Predicting the future. Yeah. Um, and I suppose it takes the art form away from the impossible, which is what a magician aims to do. Yeah. Of, of course he's doing it, so it's possible, but in the minds of the audience, yeah. what the magician does should seem absolutely impossible. Yeah. When you move into mentalism, you're getting, getting into the area of very unlikely very, right. very unlikely, but possible. Yeah. Hi there, welcome back. Today I'm chatting to Ian McCoy, who is a magician and a mentalist, amongst many, many other things. And quite a fascinating man, if I may say, Ian. Oh, thank you. Right, this mentalism, mind reading, and you say you use the, the NLP yeah. and read people's eyes. Yes, is there Some, some, sometimes. It, well, is there something that you could do, do with me now to yes. demonstrate sure. this? Sure. Right, okay. Well, remember, as, as again I said, we're moving into the very unlikely rather than the impossible. Yeah. So, um, I'd like you just to think of any number for me between, say, 10 and 12. No, 10 and 1,000. So right. you've got 900 possibilities. Right. It could be personal to you. Yeah. It could be part of a number that you know, or it could just be random. I don't really care. Right. Any number any between, number between ten, one, 10 and 1,000. 1,000. If you made it, to make it more difficult, three digits would make it more difficult for me. Three digits. But, right. So, just in your um, head. Okay. I want you to relax yeah. now and, not, and try not to give me any signs of what you, you, what you thought of. Okay. So there's actually no such thing as mind reading. I mean, no. we, we do call it mind reading. It's more like sort of body language reading and yeah. a lot of other things as well. So if I say poker face, you know what I mean? I do. But people I, give will, things I, am away. Such, I am a very nice woman and I will be heartbroken if I'm the first person on pan-European television 
that you get it wrong. I feel so guilty. It's okay. We'll, I feel we'll have so a go. guilty. But the thing about mentalism is, yeah. it's not. It's not like magic. Right. Mistakes are made and it's acceptable. Right. Fair because enough. it's not about doing the impossible. Okay. Right. It's about doing the very unlikely. Yes. Okay. So just to think about it without reacting. Keep your right. pant face. Is it one, two, three, one, one? Is it two or is it three? Okay. Are we talking about numbers? I am just asking you to keep a poker face and not say a thing. All right, okay. One digit number, two digit number, three digit number. All Don't right, say anything. Okay. It's a two digit number, three digit number. Okay, I'm getting it now. Think of the first digit. Don't say anything. One, yeah. two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Mm -hmm. Think of the second digit. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Think of the third digit. One, two, no third digit. 71. Holy camoly! <laughs> Can I open this up and show you? Sure, I mean... Oh, that's good! That's good, look, look. 71. That! <laughs> now, I am impressed. <laughs> Thank you. I, I am impressed. I'm having a hot flush. <laughs> <laughs> that was fabulous! Thank you. Oh, Dan, wasn't that good? That was good. That shut Dan up in his little bo <laughs> box doing, in the Dan? corner. That was fantastic. That was really good. Yeah, mentalism is something is something I've been very much into for about the last ten years, I'd yeah. say. Um, whereas up to about ten years ago, it was more like sleight of hand magic, which I still love and still do. Yeah. I do. I love still love doing card magic, for yeah. example. Um, and maybe I could show you some. Well, we'll some do stage. some in a minute. But, but what we're going but to do? Now. We're going to take just a quick look at another clip of you okay. while I recover from the excitement. <laughs> And you've travelled the world. Yes. You really have. You've been all over the world to amaze your audiences. If you had to pick your very favourite show that you've ever performed, where would that be? Oh, wow. So there's, it's difficult to pinpoint because there's so many. Yeah. But in terms of memorable shows, yeah. Um, there was a time, I did a show in San Francisco and I shared the stage with Robin Williams for two oh, hours, wow. two hours, yeah. which was an amazing experience. I mean, How I, I'm, come? I'm not, um, I'm not really a hero worshipper, but I, I've really admired Robin Williams yeah. from a very early age. Um, to, to, to get to be on stage with him for two hours non-stop yeah. was, was, was an experience. Why, like why were you on stage with him for two hours? What were okay, you Okay, there was a charity event in San Francisco. And one of my corporate clients, who I did a number of shows for, his wife was organising the charity event and asked me to perform. Yeah. In fact, asked me not just to perform, to present the whole event yeah. as a presenter and a magician. And it was to raise money for a school. Right. But it was a very prestigious school in San Francisco. Yeah. And basically, I had to auction off very prestigious prizes like holidays abroad, uh, antique. Fit. These were the. It was the. I was told it was the rich, rich and powerful of San Francisco were all in the audience. Right. Whether it be from industry or movies yeah. or entertainment. But it was all for charity. It anyway. was all for charity, yeah. and I was on stage for three hours, mm. auctioning and performing. Yeah. Um, and I got a call to say that from one of Robin Williams' PA to say that he would be joining me on stage the couple oh. of days before the event. Yeah. And I was quite excited about this. And yeah. sure enough, an, an hour into the show, he pops on stage and we're expecting him to stay on for 10, 15 minutes. He stayed on for the whole Oh, how super. Thing. What was he like? Is he, is he as mad as a brush as he, he is? He is. He, yeah. On stage, he's, he's very, like a lot of performers, he's very, very animated. Yeah. I think that's an understatement about Robin <laughs> Williams. Um, it's difficult to keep up with him, really, but... Um, yeah. Um, I, I, I didn't really hang out with him afterwards, but I've, I've been told he's quite quiet. Off stage, he's quite yes. quiet. A lot of comedians are, aren't they? Really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, um, I might as well give my gold on my mate a plug here. Stevie Ricks over yeah. on the Wirral uh, is probably the most watched internet entertainer in the UK. Stevie Ricks. Ricks. He's the finest impressionist in the UK. Yeah. He's done some television, he's been on a couple of shows, but he's never, there's a big campaign for him to get his own get show. Get him on here. Oh, get him on Stevie, here. Stevie's unbelievable. No, but that, <laughs> there's another, I, I mentioned Stevie, not just to give him a plug, because he's one of the finest entertainers in the UK. Yeah. He actually is a very quiet lad. When he's not on the stage. When he's not on the stage. It's he's funny, lovely, yeah. but when he's on the stage, he's, he's yeah. but with Robin Williams, um, as I say, he was, it was great to be on stage with him. Um, 
Luckily, it was filmed. So I have footage of <laughs> Wonderful. that. Wonderful. That'll that, There's that, some that'll footage of that. Which, help uh, your CV for helps, the rest of your yeah. life. Hi well, there. Welcome back. Today, I'm chatting to magician and mentalist, amongst many other things, Ian McCoy. Ian, you've got a, you've got something you're going to show us now. Sure. Um, it's a, in terms of mentalism, it's something we call a book test. Yeah. And there's many different wa ways of doing this. I've got four books here. Yeah. And um, we'll just use this one for now. As I look away, Deb, can you just look at the book as I look away? Right. I'm just look over here. Make sure all the I'm words. I'm looking at the book. Yeah. All the words different that are flying past. Oh yeah. It's, it's just totally normal, an ordinary right? book. Now this time I'll go through again. So two two hundred odd pages. This time you just say stop any way you want. Stop. Are you happy with that? Yeah. Could you look at this first word for me? You can take the book. Yeah. Remember the first word. Right. I'll look away. Now, what I'm going to do now, can I shut the book? You can shut the book if you want. Right, it, but it I'm matter. going to write the first word to show my friends. Okay, that's, that's okay? fine. That's, that's right, fine. there it is. I'll, I'll give you the book back while I write the and word. Keep it closed. I don't want to see it anymore. Right, no, it's closed. Okay. It's closed. Right. Right down Here's the Here's the word. Open don't smell it. <laughs> right, hang on a minute. It is. Now, as you're doing that, don't listen though, because you might be able to that's, hear. That's well. Believe it or not, that is a technique we use. That's why I'm talking. Right. People at home, okay. People so at anyone, home. I'm, I'm trying to look away here. look here. People at home. Can you see it? Okay. Right. And put that so I can't see it, please. Right. Um, right. Well, we can get back to that. We in a get second. back. Okay. I've got a couple of other books here. Yeah. Uh, just uh, choose one. I'll choose any mini that one. Okay. Hold it face down. Yeah. Like this, like I'll show you how. Like Go this, on. hold right. it face down. Like this. I don't even know what it's called. I haven't looked at it. Doesn't matter. It. Okay. And just right, uh, hold it. open it anywhere. Open it anywhere. Any yeah. Okay. Right. I've opened it. Actually, somewhere. close it again for me. Closed it. I want you to go like this. Make sure there are no breaks. Right. There. And open it. Sort of. I'm not saying open it in the middle, but don't sort of middleish. Okay. Middleish. Right. And then. When you've opened it, I don't want to look. Now, can I look in it? You look in now. Right. Look, look at the pages now. Yeah. And just quickly look at the page numbers, but don't tell me. Yeah. And close the book. Right. And that's fine. We'll have. Shall I write the numbers down no, as well? No, that's no. fine. You don't have to do that. Um, this is a very famous book. Tell yeah. them what that is. Oh, this is Dan Brown, Angels and Demons, which I've read and actually enjoyed it more than the Da Vinci and Code. And so did I. Yes, I did. No, I did. It was very good. All you need to do, as I look away again, yep. find the page number in that book that corresponds to the page numbers that you just looked at in the other book. Right. But don't tell me. Right. Hang on. Uh, yes. Now, in your head, yeah. in your mind, yeah. just read the first couple of paragraphs. Say. First paragraph. Of the first page. First. Uh, first, make it the first page. Yeah. Right, first, right, in my mind. Okay. Just read the first paragraph in right. your head, but don't tell me. Right. And stop. Yeah. Put the book face down, but still open. Right. On your lap, maybe. This would better be good. It will be good. <laughs> Remember the word that you wrote down? Yeah. In your head, I'm going to try and guess the amount of letters. Right. 13. It's a long word. Think of the first letter for me. Yeah. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, yeah. H. It's an E. Yeah. A, B, C. Think of the whole word, especially the last letter. Right. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. The last letter's a T. It's a long word. Yeah. Come on, I need some encouragement. I need some encouragement here. Can you help me out? <laughs> I need some encouragement. Is the word encouragement? <laughs> yes. Yes, it, it is. is. <laughs> Look at that! Okay. Look don't, don't, at don't that! Don't let me see the book. No, not let me see the book. Okay. <laughs> Oh, there it is. There, I can see it on the TV screen. There you go. No, that's just the word to prove yeah. you were right. Now, once more, go back to that first paragraph. Wow! Go back to the first paragraph. Right. Now, read the whole paragraph in your head. Right. Hold on a minute. Uh... Yeah. And close the. Oh, maybe you want to show the audience in a second, but I'm going to tell you now the feel I'm getting for that paragraph. It ties in with what you asked about my book, Magic in the Centre. It's, it's all about science and God. And I think what you're saying is I'm getting a picture of a sad lady playing with the hair, and the, la the sad lady's playing with the hair, and she has a name and begins with a V. And what she's doing is she's saying that uh, science and God don't contradict each other. And she's saying that science actually can prove God. And she goes on to say that someone's trying to create an experiment um, to create genesis or life from nothing. And I, a Vittorio I'm getting. Oh, shall I read it? Yes. Vittorio said. Vittorio, close. Vittorio said. 
where science supported the concept of God. She ran a hand through her long hair, looking melancholy. A bit sad, you got it right. He set out to do something no scientist had ever thought to do, something that no one has ever had the technology to do. She paused as though uncertain how to say the next words. He designed an experiment to prove Genesis was possible. Prove Genesis, Langton wondered. Let there be light, matter from nothing. Thank you. <laughs> that was unbelievable. That's so, so clever. Because just think, if I'd have opened that page just an encouragement a little bit different, and, and the word that in word encouragement. That's a long word. You see, it's a long that's word. absolutely mind-bendingly mind-bending. <laughs> I, th I think a lot of people enjoy the mentalism even more than the magic. Oh, actually. I do. Yeah. I, I think, well, no, I've, not, I've, not, I've, never, I've never had any mentalism done on me. I, yeah. think I, I find it more fascinating. Yeah, even. I think and I love do. the magic. Yeah, wow. I do as well. Oh, that was absolutely brilliant. Thank you. Now, Fantastic. you appear in a lot of trade shows. Yes. So how does the magic of mentalism sort of work in the trade shows? Well, trade shows, um, magic and mentalism is perfect for trade shows. Because yeah. a trade show, a trade show booth is basically a shop front. Yeah. And a shop front, businesses want people stopping and buying. Yes. Just, they need people at the stands. Um, and um, I, don't, I don't do a lot of these, but I did do one not too long ago in North Wales. It was a big trade show, and it was a two-day affair, and I ended up on BBC Wales, which was quite wow. interesting. Um, the opening, opening caption to the news I had showed me performing a trick. Yeah, um, Super. Which was hilarious, because on the second day I went in, I had no idea, yeah. because I lived 15 miles, 15 miles away yeah. over the border in the Wirral. Yeah. So we don't get BBC Wales. No, no. But it was all over Wales, I didn't yeah, see it. Yeah. A lot of people did see it, until, and I, I've been told what it was. It said, the trade show in Flintshire, um, and as the narrator is talking, it opens up with me making a scarf disappear. Yeah. With the word, with, with the company name on or yeah. whatever. And the narrator says, and as the magician makes the scarf disappear, it's a pity the government can't make unemployment disappear. Oh. <laughs> Which oh, was quite funny. It was, yeah. But in terms of your first question, a trade show is basically, as I say, like a shop, a shop window. And my job is to get people to the shop window. Yeah. Now the thing is, you can't really employ a comedian or a no. musician or a trade show, no. but because magic and mentalism has a more of an intellectual feel to it, mm. it attracts people to the booth. Yes. So it's a purely business exercise. But the part I love, which I certain with this show, you actually gear your magic and mentalism to the product or service. Right. So yeah. you use the logo, yeah. uh, the selling points of the company and yeah. build your routines around that. How and this super. particular one I did was for a company called Electrocycle. Yeah. And I spent uh, a couple of hours with the marketing manager yeah. and got all the information about their selling points and developed a number of routines around that company. How clever. So it's, it's actually, um, it's an act with attitude. Yeah. Yeah, uh, you know, yeah. you have to you have to have the intelligence to yeah. make it work and find the unique selling points. Yes. And a, yes. How clever yes. is that? Yes. Well, I tell you what, if, if, if ever I'm selling anything, I'll, <laughs> I'll just be tell in me there. what is your website? Your uh, magical and uh, easy to remember. It's right. www.ianmccoy.com. Dead easy. www.ianmccoy.com. Have a little look at it, it's brilliant. And it's been such a pleasure speaking it's to you. It's been absolutely Thank wonderful, Debbie. Much. Absolutely wonderful. And from me, Debbie Jones, till next time, take care.